What's up everyone, Darkscreen217 here. Before I begin my little video, I am going to make a shout out to Multifire's most recent video, Making Videos Feels Meaningless, where he talks about why he's been on a huge hiatus on making vlogs, and he's still kind of sort of in that hiatus. Um, I won't uh, explain in detail as to why, because you can just find it all in that video there. Uh, after you do see that video, I do have a video response to that video soon. Uh, because I, too, have been having the same feelings as he does for a while. But one of the biggest reasons is why he is giving up on making videos for now is because he'd rather focus on his other hobby, which is drawing. And he even has a DA account for that, which I will post a link below. And I'd rather him focus more on that. And I even actually have friends who are artists who like to draw and stuff, so hopefully they can get in touch with him and they can communicate with him and help him give him some advice, because I'm friends with a lot of artists and writers, shockingly enough. So I wish him luck on that. Anyways, now let's begin with my video. Recently, I've actually been not watching many reviews or reading any reviews on anything as of recent. Uh, because they're just slowly getting on my nerves. In fact, rem I don't know if people remember this, but I posted a vlog a couple years back how I talked about why I didn't like Let's Plays. Now I'm pulling a complete 180. I actually enjoy some Let's Plays out there because, you know, when they play the game, um, even if it's bad, they find some way to enjoy themselves and find some way for them to, you know, like the thing that they're playing. I mostly usually watch the two best friends play, Matt and Pat, from uh, Machinima, or The Switcher. Um, but lately, I just don't like reviewers all that much, because they've been some picky bastards who will pull up any word out of this set of lists I have right here on why so-so is bad. And um, let's talk about each of those words, shall we? The first word that I like to discuss that a lot of reviewers use that gets under my skin Multifire already mentioned in the video I plug is uh, cliche, and it's a word that gets on my nerves. It's either cliche or synonym like bland or something similar to those lines. They use it for anything really story, plot, characters, even settings. And I've never seen them emphasize why. Probably because they do this as an excuse to not go any further into analyzing the cliche in question. And it's pretty damn annoying because 9 times out of 10, it may not even be true for that matter. And I don't care if they say it's been done before, because guess what? A lot of stories, characters, etc. have been done before in similar fashions. Do you know how many Sun Wukong slash Sun Goku inspired characters that exist in anime and video games alone? See, it just, it all determines on how well the, it works in the show, game, or movie itself. That's all that really matters. Does this Son Goku character inspired character work well in the show in question? If not, explain why. If so, also explain why. The second word I don't like seeing, um, and this is used to describe positive reviews, uh, mostly in the action flicks, is I don't like it when a film is being labeled dumb, despite the fact that they may like or enjoy this film. Uh, take for example, what's a what's an action flick that came out this year? Oh, uh, The Avengers, obviously. Some people would say, oh, I like the Ave Avengers, it's just a crazy, dumb action flick. Hold it! Stop right there. Last time I checked, calling something dumb is insulting. I don't think the movie is intelligent by all means, but I don't think the film is stupid or dumb. It's, I would like to say it has an average IQ. Besides, when a good action sequence is it executed, um, I'm pretty sure some thought was put into making that action sequence good, um, such as how long should this action sequence be, what camera angle shots can we use to make sure the audience follows it, what kind of music score would fit for something like this. All this while trying to put into thought how to captivate the audience. There's just all that just feels like there's just too much thought in there, and it would take too much work to be considered a dumb action sequence. Now, if the film turns out to be bad and the action sequences are poorly executed, like, you know, bad camera angles, we can't see anything, or it might have been too short and unsatisfying, I can understand that. Or maybe too long and unsatisfying, I can understand that too. Another word, um, that I really dislike seeing, and now that Multifire pointed out to me, 
And in fact, this is a word he hates more. But uh, it's on the opposite of dumb. It's pretentious. Where people will label a film that's probably, that requires some, some thought and some attention and higher thinking value as pretentious or pretending to be smart. Which is kind of pretty bad because it eradicates the idea of, you know, discussion or, or, or analyzing a film. It really does. And I'm not even into a lot of uh, artistic anime or movies or whatever. I'm usually a guy who just enjoys things that are fun. But I'm not gonna attack a film or anime that requires co a complete attention, thought, analysis, and maybe even some discussions uh, by calling it pretentious. You know, I might actually go after something I consider bad writing or bad editing, bad characters, whatever, before I label a film like that. The next word on my list is overrated. I briefly mentioned this before, but I do not believe in the term overrated. See, if I think something is bad or okay, I'll just say it's bad or okay. I've even seen some people who like films say, you know, I like it, but I think it's overrated. Just, just say you like it, or say I like it just not as much as everyone else. You know, I saw more prom I had more problems with the film than everyone else. Now just come out and say that. It almost tells the, the term overrated almost tells everyone that hey, they're liking it too much. Stop liking it too much, and that's also pretty damn annoying. Just as annoying as pre uh, pretentious. Now I like to use the word underrated just in case I think something gets you know, ripped onto shreds, but mostly because I'm trying to be a positive thinking fellow here, that's why. Okay, the next phrase is strictly for video games. Repetitive. As in, I did not like this game, uh, let's pull an example. Uh, let's just say I did not like King of Fives 13 because I thought the gameplay was pretty repetitive. Here's the big secret though. Unless if it's a party game, a lot of video games in their gameplay is repetitive. Granted, they do things that make try to differentiate from you know one level to the other, but you still have mostly the same objective. Like in Sonic, it's most Sonic games, right? Get from point A to point B, beat up some monsters, and get some power-ups in between. They'll try to break it by having different level designs and stuff, but at the end, you're still kind of doing the same thing. So I don't get why it's necessary to call anything repetitive. I love the fighting game genre, and that's as repetitive as it can get. And I mentioned party games before because they at least have like different uh, good party games like uh, Mario Party, or I actually recently played uh, Nintendo Land with friends, and I thought it was pretty enjoyable. But even then, you may stumble onto the same mini game or something that you'll have to play. So even that's a little repetitive. Like I said, everything's repetitive. Even when you replay a game, it's repetitive. You play Persona 4 again, you're still going to have to go through a bunch of dungeons and stuff. So I don't see why you need to bash something that is pretty much a standard in almost everything in video games. This next one used to be something that's preached, but now it's kind of a hated phrase. Even one person who liked to use it, Big Al, doesn't like using this. But it's the phrase, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Okay, I can understand that if you're watching a TV series or something. Let's put WWE Monday Night Raw for example. I think it's pretty bad. I don't think I'm ever going to enjoy this, though I want to. There's a point of no return. Well then. I don't like it, so I'm just going to drop the show entirely until people tell me it gets better and then I may give it another chance. That's where I can see where the if you don't like it, don't watch it thing comes in. If you drop a show midway because you think it's that bad and you don't think it'll prove over time you just gave up, then it makes sense to use that. Because I've seen people subject themselves into stuff that they're not going to enjoy. I'm like, do you really need to continue watching this? It's a 50 episode anime. It's like, uh, it, it, I'm really not liking it, but I'm hoping to like it. <laughs> and then they ended up being pissed off on the way it ended and everything. And they just wasted a good amount of their time when they could have been watching or doing something else. It happens. Now, where I don't like you, where this term is being used, 
is when somebody gets their review criticized <laughs> or their videos kind of critiqued and they just say well if you don't like it don't watch it despite you know it could be regardless of the points they could actually make some really good points or really good counter arguments and you know they probably want them to improve on their criticisms because like multifire said most reviewers are popcorn factor i'll get on to that later uh, Jade Otaku Media uses this practice, which I think is kind of annoying because a lot of people called him out in his reviews, and some of them did a really good job, and I've heard a lot of counter-arguments, and he still brushes them off like he thinks he's better than everyone else. That's another thing, like, that whole don't like it, don't watch it just really is an unnecessary, overinflated ego boost. So, yeah, I do not like that, I do not, don't like it, don't watch it. I can understand if you were like dropping a TV series or maybe uh, a film series or, or anything that has a really long one run that uh, requires more than two hours of your time. But I don't like it when people use it as a shield. And the final thing is not a phrase, but it's basically a, in a review in general. Um. It could be somebody talking about a show or whatever for a good chunk, almost like two-thirds to nine-tenths of the video, talking about how it's bad, or how the characters are annoying, or how this or that is just poorly executed and stuff. You, who have no experience in seeing the, the thing in re being reviewed, go, wow, this all sounds pretty terrible. Up until the last minute, the reviewer actually goes, but I think it's really good, I like it. But you just spent seven minutes painting out to be the worst thing ever. How could you say that? And that's something that gets me. It's like people like to... This is, again, people would rather just bash on something for entertainment purposes as in to provide legit, honest opinions. Um, which is something I really don't like. I think it's kind of distasteful. Because it makes, me, it, it makes me think that you really can't enjoy anything in life and you're probably going to die angry because you can't enjoy anything in life. I really don't like it when people do that. Even if they're describing something that they like because it's so bad it's entertaining, they still pan out to be a miserable, sufferable experience if you yourself watch the uh, show or play this video game. Um, to be honest, it would, be, it would make more sense if you were talking about how bad it is, but kind of smiling and joking about it and stuff and say, yeah, the, I, yeah it's pretty bad, but uh, you know, Garzy's Wing has a really horrible dub, but that's what makes it tolerable. Check these clips out. I can understand that, and uh, that just makes more sense than, oh my god, the characters are annoying, the action scenes are too badly executed, everything's wrong with this anime. But I like it, 9 out of 10. Man, that just, that really doesn't make any sense, that's pretty bipolar. So yeah, those are the things I hate to see in, you know, most reviews, and unfortunately I see them almost everywhere I go. I really don't need them to see an opinion to watch something because usually I now have like, I pretty much know who I am to where I know what I'm going to like or dislike. So I really don't see the point in watching reviews. Now the point in doing reviews, that's a whole other thing I'm going to talk about in a video response, which is also a follow up to more things Multifire elaborated on. Because like I said before, or I don't know if I said this, but uh, I've had a period where I just didn't feel like doing videos in general myself, but for some completely different reasons. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this little rant. I this little list rant I did. Um, if there's more things, if I exit, if I stumble onto more reviews that have different points that start to poke me on the stick, I may do a part two to this. But I'm not. Don't hold your breath on that one. That's all I got to say, Darkstream217, signing out, I'll catch you all later.